So broadly speaking, we use coronary stents in two major settings. The first one is in individuals who have uh, developed narrowings in the blood supply to their heart and start feeling chest tightness or chest pain when they exert themselves. Once a diagnosis of such narrowings has been made, uh, patients are often uh, commenced on a combination of drugs that is aimed to A, uh, relieve their symptoms and B, um, alter the various pathways that ultimately lead to uh, the narrowing in the first instance. If despite being on the right uh, medication, uh, patients continue to experience uh, chest discomfort, then coronary stents can be placed in the narrowed areas to restore blood flow and therefore take away their symptoms. Coronary stents can also be used in the set of an emergency when an individual um, uh, presents uh, with a heart attack. A heart attack occurs when there is sudden obstruction of blood flow down uh, one or more of the three blood tubes that take blood to the heart muscle. Um, and in this setting, it is extremely important to relieve the obstruction, A, to make the patient feel better, and B, uh, restore the blood supply to the heart and uh, minimize heart muscle damage. This is the second scenario where uh, we use stents, uh, and this is usually done uh, in the context of an emergency. The two major components of a coronary stent is a, a metal scaffold. Um, this is designed to uh, provide a scaffold uh, within the narrowed segment and prevent the um, uh, collapse of the uh, narrowed area. The metal component can be an alloy, a combination of cobalt and chromium, or uh, stainless steel. These are the two major uh, components that uh, various companies have used to produce their stents. The more uh, modern stents, however, also contain a very sophisticated uh, drug coating uh, that is designed to uh, reduce the risk of narrowing uh, within the stent once the stent has been placed in the uh, coronary arteries. These uh, drugs are uh, Examples of these drugs include, for example, serolimus or zoterolimus, depending on the uh, company that's produced the stent. Well, the coronary stent in its purest form is a metal scaffold. It stretches the uh, narrowed segment um, of the blood vessel. It embeds into the artery and keeps the artery open. It is only one facet of treating narrowings within the circulation to the heart. Um, the uh, other major facets are drugs. These drugs are uh, designed, uh, in addition to relieving symptoms, um, also um, preventing or certainly minimizing the risk of further cholesterol deposition in the wall of the arteries, which in essence is the basic principle by which uh, narrowings develop in the uh, blood supply to the heart. The third facet, which is uh, extremely important as well, is what the patient can do for themselves. So we often recommend that patients should, for example, stop smoking if uh, they are smoking, adopt a healthy so-called Mediterranean style uh, diet, exercise regularly if uh, they are overweight to optimize their weight. And if they have, for example, high blood pressure or diabetes, then to ensure that their blood pressure and diabetic control is as good as it can be. Um, it is a major uh, procedure, um, more commonly for the patient than the doctors who are doing it. For the patients, it's often the fear of the unknown. Um, you know, the patients are going to hospital, they are in an anxious state. This is often the first time that they present with uh, what they think is a life-threatening um, uh, problem. But we often counsel patients extremely well before their procedure. 
During the procedure, we have excellent uh, nursing and supporting staff uh, that ensure A, the uh, comfort of the patient, and B, as a whole team, we ensure that the safety of the patient remains our uh, number one priority. For the cardiologists that do the procedure, by the time you have become a consultant, you have carried hundreds, if not thousands, of this procedure. So um, it is a major procedure, yes, but all of us who do this uh, kind of procedure are well-trained um, and well-versed with any potential um, issues that may arise during the course of the procedure. So if I had to summarize, I would say it's a major surgery from the patient's perspective, but for the doctors, because we do it all the time, we don't think of it as such. So once we put a stent, um, it stays uh, with you for the rest of your life. Um, the more modern stents have a renarrowing rate um, of probably about 3% per year. Um, it is for that reason that uh, it is extremely important that uh, patients uh, take the medications that we prescribe them and do everything else that uh, I have already mentioned, namely ensuring that uh, uh, they exercise regularly, eat well, um, and equally importantly, um, essentially look after stents. It's a friend for you for the rest of your life. We expect patients to return to a full and um, active lifestyle. Once you have had coronary stents, there are very few things, if any, that uh, uh, you cannot do. You should be able to do uh, whatever you like. Um, yes, there is. Um, so when we recommend a coronary stent, it should be for the right individual in the right setting. Patients may choose to seek alternative treatments, and the major two treatments are uh, medication uh, that are designed to relieve symptoms. Uh, medicines often do not um, uh, relieve obstruction that has developed in the uh, blood supply to your heart. They are designed, A, to relieve your symptoms, and B, minimize the risk of further narrowings developing and the pre-existing narrowings getting worse. If the uh, narrowings are extensive, depending on their uh, location and depending upon the extent of um, the involvement of the uh, three tubes that take blood to the heart muscle, then a bypass operation is also um, a, a very effective uh, alternative. <laughs> 